have drivers improved over the years? I honestly don't know the answer to that question, and that's why I'm making this video. Over the last seven years, I have had six different drivers in my bag, which seems crazy, but when you test as many golf clubs and you get as much equipment through the doors as I do, you're bound to make some changes, maybe some rash decisions, I don't know. That's why I wanna make this video. So starting back in 2017, I was playing a Callaway Epic. This year in 2024, I've got a Ping 10K Max and I've got a slew of drivers in between, which we're gonna test head to head to find out have drivers improved over the years. Now, my hypothesis is that I don't think we're gonna see huge distance gains because we've had, even back further than 2017, we've had USGA, RNA standards that limit how efficient a club can be, the smash factor number, and that limits how far a ball can actually go. And that's when we all kind of chuckle when we hear manufacturers say, this driver's 10 yards further, 20 yards further than our previous driver. It's just simple physics. It's not really possible, I don't think, but we're gonna find out. That's why we have to do this type of testing. Now, where I think we have seen improvements, or I have seen improvements in my game, at least, is I hit more fairways because I think the dispersion numbers have gotten tighter over the years but again we need to test that so that's what i'm going to do today we're going to hit five shots with each of my drivers over the last seven years luckily i've kept them all we've got different shafts for each of them because that's what came standard and that's how i had it set up and over the years i've played anything from a nine degree to now i play a ten and a half degree so i've turned my nine degree drivers up to ten to get us as close as we can to an apples to apples comparison this is going to be a ton of fun and if you enjoy videos like this please do hit subscribe it really helps Let's play through grow. We're about to hit 75,000 subscribers as of me making this video. I've got a lofty goal to hit 100,000 this year. You can help me do that. When we do though, there's gonna be a lot of prizes and a lot of fanfare, so it's gonna pay to subscribe as well. But without further ado, let's get into the test. All right, first driver up is going to be my driver from 2017, the Callaway Great Big Bertha Epic. And this was actually the first brand new club that I had ever bought in my entire life. Up until that point, I'd always had hand-me-down clubs or I had got my club second hand at places like Played Against Sports and things like that. So when I dropped the money on this one, it was a huge, huge purchase for me and really loved this driver when I played it. Now, with this Callaway Epic, you've got a sliding weight. Again, the first time I ever had a sliding weight there towards the back, and you've got a lot of adjustability in this hosel. For me, this was the most adjustable driver I had ever tried. I had this shaft fitted with a green, like a lime green Project X Hazardous, and this was 55 gram stiff shaft. It's actually the same weight of shaft that I'm playing right now currently, so that's very interesting. The grip is still the original grip. Everything's original, really. Looking down at it, gotta say, I think the looks still hold up. You've got some lime green accents there towards the back, but you've got this nice Callaway logo that is already kind of like an arrow, and that's gonna be your alignment marker here. You've got full opaque black that sort of fades into a carbon fiber look back there. It's a really sharp looking club. Good size head. Let's see how it does here in 2024. Well, lost that one off to the right a little bit. Now that shot, according to the GC quad here, was a little bit towards the heel and a little bit higher up on the face. My efficiency dropped to 1.38 because of that. Now in terms of backspin 2586, just a little higher than I like to be, but not a horrible number. That one carried 218, finished 238. Shot two. On a similar line, it looks like. Carried a lot better there though. I got a little better contact. It was more central, but it was still a little high up on the face. Club head speed was the same, 98. My backspin there, that's a big difference from that first shot though, 1752, actually kind of low for me. It carried 234 and rolled out to 258. Pretty acceptable shot. I assume that would hit maybe the right side of the fairway, possibly first cut. That one I felt was really in the middle and the GC quad also tells me that as well. I am losing them all off to the right just a little bit as you can see with this driver, maybe the shaft. Club head speed was up a little bit there, 99. There's the backspin number I'd like to see, 2235. It carried 237, rolled out to 261. That's a pretty darn good drive, honestly. If I could get that direction straightened out, we'd be in good shape. 
There we go. It's probably my best swing. Caught that pretty central in the club face according to the GC quad here. And look at that, rolled out to 262. Backspin 1866, again, a little low maybe. One more shot here. And that was a little higher up on the club face. Club head speed 98, ball speed 139, backspin, again, low, 1676. And that means you're losing a little bit of carry generally. That trajectory was a little bit lower as well. 226 was the carry, 256 was the total. All in all though, gotta say, pretty strong numbers there with the Epic. Very, very cool to see. Now, I had this driver for over four years. Again, this was the first club I had ever bought, but the next club that I purchased was where I thought I really gained some extra yardage and some more consistency, and it was with the Sim 2. The Sim 2 came out in 2021, early part of the year. I bought it. Now with the Sim 2, the bottom shape of this club, really interesting. It was so futuristic looking to me back in the day. Between the paint as well as the shape, that elongated heel of the club, very, very interesting shape to it. I don't have the adjustability I had in the Epic with this one. I have just a big, giant tungsten weight back there. You do have a lot of adjustability though in that hosel still. And you've got one tungsten weight there towards the face that's fixed as well. And this driver I had paired with a Tensei 60 gram, so I stepped up about five grams there. Blue Tensei stiff shaft. From the top, it was much more classic in its looks, although the paint job is pretty wild. Instead of that arrow we had on the Callaway, now we've got a tailor-made logo as our alignment point. Glossy, but it's somewhat matte on top, that finish, and you can see the carbon fiber throughout. It's a good looking driver, and that white area on the face kind of offers some extra alignment. Just a really good looking driver. Now I caught that one a little heel side. Middle of the club face, but heel side, but that's a pretty darn forgiving result. Rolled out to 252 on a 98 mile an hour club head speed, 138 ball speed, the efficiency 141. Again, efficiency there is smash factor. And look at that backspin number, really in line with where I'd like to be, 2237. That's uh, pretty darn good. Anywhere from 2000 to 2200 is where I like to be, personally. Carried 228 there. Again, that was not a fully center strike, so we got more in the tank here for sure. You just can't beat the feel and sound of a tailor-made driver. If you go back all the way even into the M series, I think TaylorMade's had the best aesthetics when it comes to feel and sound. Now I did push that one off to the right a bit, but the smash factor was up there, one, four, four. That was pretty middle of the club face, just really, I pushed it. Backspin, there's a good number there again, 2002. It carried to 243 and rolled out to 266. That was the type of distance I was seeing for the first time with this driver and even further, I think I hit a couple in the 270s, maybe even touched 280 with this when I first tried it. Of course, my swing speed was up as well. That was another one pretty well in the center. Nice carry numbers, nice finishing number there at 266. That was 99 mile an hour club head speed. The smash 144 carried 241. Again, the backspin number in a really good spot, 2113. This shaft still holds up. You still see Tensei Blues come stock with a lot of clubs. Now, that may have been updated slightly. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, there's still Tensei Blue on the market for sure. All right, shot four here. Hit that one a little higher up on the club face. I'd call it semi-central. Club speed was 98. Backspin, a little lower there, 1899. Carry 236, rolled out to 261. So we're living in the 260s, which is nice with this driver. One more shot here. That one was just ever so slightly heel side, but pretty darn central. And again, good result. 257 is where it finished. 97 mile an hour club head speed. That was our lowest with this driver. Carried 230, rolled to 258. Backspin again, a little bit lower there. Overall, a very, very solid performance from the Sim 2. This driver, in my opinion, still holds up today. Now I had that driver for about a year and my next driver that I really fell in love with was the Rogue ST Max. This came out in 2022, the next year. I tested all of the drivers that year. 
This one I found to be the most consistent. I thought it was very, very forgiving and very long. Maybe not the longest of all of them, but right up there. And I hit a lot of fairways with the Rogue ST Max. Checking out the tech here on the Rogue, you've got a giant, very, very cool. It's like a bronzish, goldish, copperish look. I guess copper maybe is the closest color, although it's a little lighter than regular copper, but just a giant weight back there that's moving a lot of the mass towards the center of this club and towards the rear to really provide high MOI. No adjustability though when it comes to a sliding track or anything like that, but you have a ton of adjustability there in the hosel as well. This also has a Tense Blue. Now, instead of 60 grams though, we're back to 55 grams with this shaft. Now, this was the first time I also went to a Max model. So this head is bigger than those other two drivers, considerably bigger, and I love Again, love that Callaway alignment. That arrow is like the perfect alignment tool, but I really love the matte finish of this. The matte black takes away the glare. Beautiful looking driver. It looks forgiving because it's so big, that face. Here we go. Hit that one high and heel side. Really wasn't good contact, but the result is gonna be pretty passable for sure. Probably still hit a fairway there. Club head speed was 97. The spin 2000 on the button, carried 219, roll out to 243. The efficiency 139. Again, you can see I did not catch that one in the middle. Let's see if we can do better here. I think that was there. That's the little tight baby draw that I love. And we're hugging the line there. Rolled out to 263 on a 98 mile an hour club head Speed, 141 ball speed, backspin 1850, maybe a touch low, carried 235. Good result. Now, according to the GC quad, that wasn't dead middle. It was actually a little high up on the club face, according to the quad here. That one was just a push. Struck it pretty darn well. I think you can see that from the carry number there. The smash factor is going to be decent, I think. 144, that is decent. Backspin perfect, 2220. Ball speed again, 141. We finished at 259. Got a little better launch there. You can see it went up a little higher in the air. Let's see if that gives us some more carry. 255 is where it finished. Club head speed was 99. Carried 231. Total 255. Definitely hit that one high on the club face, according to the GC quad. And that was a good one. That was a very good one. That's right down the line. That could win the straight drive contest. At least where it landed and it rolled out to 261. Club at speed 99, ball speed 139. The efficiency, man, I really thought I caught that one in the middle. It does look high up on the GC quad. Look at that backspin number, 1544, carried 230, total 262. So overall, interestingly enough, the Sim 2 still had, it looks like to me, a little bit more distance. We're gonna look at all the stats here in just a minute, but we're halfway through. If we pause just to look at dispersion numbers, see that rogue, see how tight those th four were? That's what I was seeing. I saw that club being a very, very forgiving, very tight dispersion club. I did push that one way off to the right there, but apart from that, those were a bunch of good shots. So I didn't even have the rogue for an entire year. Again, thought this was the best batch of drivers that came out in the spring, but I thought it got better in the fall and into early 2023 is when I actually bought this driver, which is the Titleist. TSR3. Now, one thing I loved about this driver was the shaft. The shaft is a hazardous counterbalance shaft, 50 grams. So I went down another five grams there. In this driver, you've got a little bit more adjustability built in. Instead of that big tungsten weight that was fixed, you now have a sliding weight here again with the TSR3, a lot of adjustability in that hosel as well. In terms of looks, I don't know if it gets a whole lot better other than I wish it was matte, but just a pure black, gloss black, You've got the TSR as your alignment mark on this driver. And yeah, I mean, in terms of looks, feel, and sound, again, this is about as good as it gets. Between this one and the Stealth 2 that year, those would be my two favorites aesthetically. And this one ended up winning out in terms of consistency and distance for me. This club is still in the Titleist lineup, even though it was came out in 2022, late 2022. It still is their flagship, the TSR series. We probably will see an update at the end of this year, I'm imagining. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, it felt so good. Oh, I didn't even catch it dead middle. According to the GC quad, it was slightly high, slightly heel side. Probably lost a little distance because of that. 
But man, that felt so good. It just feels solid at impact. It's so good. Clubhead speed 98, ball speed 140, the efficiency 143, the backspin number perfect, 2270, carry 233, total 255. Oh, can't get over the feel of this one. Oh, so nice. When I was a kid, I played a lot of baseball when I swung a bat and I hit it right in that sweet spot. That's what this driver feels like when you, it's just so nice. The efficiency, 146 there. So it tells you I hit that a little bit more in the center. The club head speed was 99. Look at that ball speed, 144. It carried 232 and it actually only rolled out to 257. That's kind of surprising. I would have expected that drive to be in the 260s, to be honest, especially with that ball speed. But I think we had a little extra spin there, 24, 25, that may have held up some of that. Yes. Now, just ever so slightly pushed. I'm actually surprised at the distance numbers I'm seeing there. Now, maybe I'm just getting a little tired, but that club's head speed's still 99. The ball speed is still good, 142. The efficiency is good, 144. The backspin, again, a little high, 2683. And I think maybe that's holding me back just a touch. Still a good result, but I'd like to see it go a little bit longer. Maybe that's the one. That one's a nice rising trajectory. And that's what I was seeing out on the course when I really was hitting this club well. But again, distance down a little bit, surprisingly. Club speed was 99, ball speed 145. But that spin number, there you go. I'm getting the rising because I'm getting so much backspin. 2777, it carried 233 and it rolled out to 255. And it's nice to see the efficiency up there at 147. I always thought this was a very high smash factor club. One more. Hit that one off the toast. So we'll see how forgiving this one is. <laughs> See, in terms of distance, actually our, maybe our best one. Yeah, I think best one with the TSR3. We got that 99 club speed, we got the ball speed 143, the backspin a little better at 2403, but still a touch high. Carry 243, total 264. That one off to the right. But again, look at the dispersion map there on the right side of the screen. A very consistent driver in terms of distance. Isn't that interesting? At least three of those are really nice towards the center. We do have one out to the left, do have one out to the right. So. Not as good dispersion-wise, or maybe even distance-wise, as the Rogue, and that's, that's really, really interesting. Now, later in that year, I took the PXG Gen 6 Challenge, literally went out with a PXG fitter, and I tested my current driver, which I did not think could be beat, up against the PXG Gen 6. The Gen 6 won out that day. So there's three adjustable weights on this driver and they can swap in and out. Always highly recommend getting a fit, but the PXG fitting experience is really top notch. So my miss with the TSR3 was that later in the round, as I fatigued, I was definitely starting to kind of get armsy and I was suffering from some duck hooks late in the round, 16th hole on, that sort of thing. So the PXG fitter moved some weights around got this thing dialed in. So I was hitting much more straight, consistent drives, especially as I fatigued. We've got this one paired with a Kuro Kagi 55 gram stiff flex. So we went back up five grams there. Down at address, again, matte finish I love. You've got a little bit more writing and stuff there towards the edges, but it's pretty far out of the way. And I like the X as your alignment tool with this one. Good looking driver. Let's see how we do here. Let's see if it does beat the TSR3. Ooh, it felt good. Now the sound of the PXG driver, a little more high pitched. It's not as good sounding as the TSR3. Looks like we got a little bit more rollout out of this driver because the club head speed was down and just a touch there, 97. Ball speed was 141, still good. The backspin number, more in line with what I like to see, 1938. Carried 229, total 257. So we squeaked down a little bit more roll out there having the spin down which is nice the trajectory may be a little low there though let's see what we do here on shot two. Oh, i like that better now it was slightly high slightly toe side but a lot of drivers seem to perform better off the toe we saw that already with the tsr that last shot with the tsr3 and it held true there on that shot 98 mile an hour club head speed 143 was the ball speed the backspin 1714, it carried 240 and rolled out to 268. That might be our furthest of the day, I think, right? 
And for being a little off the toe, great result. I pulled that a little bit, but you know, it could have been a lot worse. That's exactly what I was saying about how we got this driver set up so that with my TSR3, that shot, because I took it so inside, that shot would have ended up in the trees somewhere. And this one with the PXG was left, maybe caught the left fairway, maybe left rough and we lost some distance, but still the efficiency actually wasn't bad either. One, four, three, the backspin was low, which meant we got more rollout and it went over to 252. All in all, great result on a pretty bad, pretty bad strike. Better shot there. Middle of the club face, but high up on the club head. Where was my swing speed at? Seemed a little lower. Yep, 97, ball speed 139. Backspin, good number, 2084, actually perfect number. Carry 235. And I believe this will be my fifth and final swing. I'm losing track because I'm swung so many times. More drives than I would take in a normal <laughs> round of golf, and I've done it in about 30 minutes here. Decent strike there, although it's kind of leaking out there to the right a bit. 257's where we finished, 98 club head speed, ball speed 140, the smash 144, backspin a little higher there, 2404, it carried 235, it finished at 257. Well, we got our longest drive there out of the Gen 6, so that was an, an improvement. Overall though, we'll look at the averages here when we wrap everything up, and <laughs> I'm so excited to actually find out, because. I really don't know. If we're looking purely at distance numbers so far, I mean, not a lot has changed in seven years, has it? But I do think dispersion, at least with some of these drivers, has gotten better. Definitely gotten better. Here's our last driver up. My current driver that I switched to here in 2024. This is the Ping 10K Max. And gosh, the first time I hit this driver, I kid you not, my first three drives in a row were within about a one yard circle, maybe two yards max. That was so impressive to me that I went and, again, spent my own money, bought this driver, and I paired it with an even more exotic shaft. This is the BGT Brava NRG. It is a very expensive shaft. This setup is the most expensive driver that I've ever had in my bag. It's almost $1,200, which is crazy. Am I gonna see $1,200 worth of consistency and distance out of it, where we're gonna find out together. In terms of this driver, again, no adjustable weighting. You've got a big tungsten weight there at the back, but you've got 10K MOI for the first time in 2024. Two drivers came out, QI10 from TaylorMade and this one from Ping, which is actually, I believe, first, but they were within a few, maybe a few days or a week of each other <laughs> launching, so it's funny how that works, isn't it? Looking down at a dress, big head again. Again, this is a max model like that Rogue ST, so it's a bigger look. Love the matte finish. No writing, but you've got turbulators there that provide the alignment, and it's grown on me. It's a very polarizing, divisive thing, but I actually have grown to really like that alignment aid, and plus those turbulators are supposed to help the sound and some other things. Is it marketing or is it for real? Well, we shall find out. Shot one. Ooh, it felt and sounded good, didn't it? Nice and straight. It started off just a tad left of that line and it pretty much stayed there. Rolled out to 256. Club head speed was up, 100. Ball speed, 141. Backspin, 2348. Carried 235, total 257. The efficiency, interestingly, only 141 there. And looking at that strike, makes sense because it was a little high and a little heel side, this bigger face. I'm gonna have to adjust my stance just slightly. There's another one. Look how straight these balls are coming off the club. Not much draw or fade on them, huh? I think we rolled out to the same number there, 257. Club head speed again, 100. So that shaft's giving me just a little bit more. Certainly after swinging 27 times, if anything, I'm more fatigued than I would have been when I started. Ball speed 139, backspin 2359, it carried 237, finished at 257. Efficiency again, a little low, 139. Caught it up here, according to the GC quad. So I haven't hit it in the middle yet. Talk about forgiveness. Much more forgiving than those other drivers, I think. On similar strikes, I should say. Again, look how straight that ball flight is. In terms of distance, that did not blow the socks off by any means, but again, if we look at the strike, that strike was right here. So we've, we've been living in this section. 
I'm gonna have to just move my stance back about an inch. The efficiency though, pretty good for where I hit it, 142. Back's been a great number, 2149. It only carried 222 because it just didn't get the launch. Didn't get up in the air, but again, that's middle of the fairway. That's where we want to be. I'm gonna reach just a little bit here. No, I think I hit that one again towards the heel. Interestingly, now that has a little bit of a baby cut to it, but uh, again, right down the middle. Now, I never thought this was the longest driver of the bunch this year. In fact, I think the longest driver was the Black Ops from PXG this year. But again, if you look at where I hit that one, according to the GC quad right up here, I'm getting some really tight dispersion from this club. Backspin a little higher there, 2594, it carried 227, rolled out to 249. Last shot, and then we're gonna look at the stats. Caught that one the most middle of any drive yet, with the ping anyways. And again, we found another fairway. Rolled out to 256, so it seems to be a trend there. Clubhead speed 98, ball speed 142. The efficiency, again, you can see was better. The smash factor 145, the backspin perfect number, carried 229, rolled out to 256. Would have gone longer if it got up in the air just a little higher, I think. Wow. I gotta say, all in all, I didn't hit any real anomalies. Maybe a couple with the epic there, but let's take a look at everything and uh, we'll find out. Have clubs improved over the years? This is pretty cool. All right, so first thing we can just look at the dispersion map here and again, that one in orange really stands out. That's the Rogue, again, with that one outlier, very, very tight in terms of dispersion. The ping may be even tighter because if you take all five shots into account, it's the tightest of all of them. And that's exactly what I thought we would see. I think we have had better dispersion numbers and better distance numbers, but only by a touch over the years here. If you look at the Epic here, these two are probably well, there may, again, maybe in the fairway, maybe in the first cut, not bad, but if this is a much wider spread, okay, than something like this ping, which again, I didn't really hit any of the pings in the middle and we got extremely good numbers. The PXG was gonna be our longest there, as you can see. And again, that Sim 2, that was a very, very strong performer. All right, so if we break down the stats here, I always wanna make sure that my club head speed's apples to apples, and I think I maintain consistency throughout. 98.1 is where we started with the Epic, 97.9 with the Sim 2, that's only 0.2 difference. 98.1 again with the Rogue, 98.5 with the TSR3. Again, I think the shaft gave me a little bit of extra there. 97.2, is that our lowest? Yeah, that's our lowest. And that was with the PXG Gen 6. That just tells you how long that club is. And the ping was actually our highest. Again, I think the shaft has something to do with that. So all in all though, only about two mile per hour between all of these clubs. And I'd say that is pretty darn consistent. Good enough, at least for a mere mortal like me. And if we look at ball speed now, 139.8 with the Epic, that's nice. 139.2 with the Sim 2, with that one or two shots here, 140 and 142 really standing out. Good ball speed numbers. 138, we dipped a little bit there with the Rogue, but we did gain better dispersion, better forgiveness. And then we got better with the TSR 3. It's interesting that one didn't go as far, because at 142.9, it definitely was set up to do so. Again, other launch characteristics and spin characteristics change things. In fact, again, you can see the spin there, which we're gonna come back to, but that may be the highest of all of them. That's hurting us a little bit distance-wise. PXG, 140.3, and the Ping 10K, 140 on the button. So, ball speed numbers have definitely increased over the years, it looks like. Even the Sim 2, which, again, very good performer in terms of distance, the ball speed numbers was a couple miles per hour lower than the other. So, Again, if we look at spin, the Epic actually overall was kind of all over the place, <laughs> but overall the number's good, 2061, but you can see there were some real anomalies, 26 down to all the way to 1600. Sim 2, again, overall, good number, a little bit more consistent though overall, I would say. That driver still holds up after all these years. Rogue ST, a little low, a little low, 1915 on average. And yeah, by far the highest, the TSR3, 25, 29. So we just weren't getting the rollout numbers, even though if we look at those carry numbers, it's gonna be strong. And I know I keep skipping ahead. I apologize, but we're gonna get there in just a sec. PXG, 1957, good number. Ping 10K, maybe just a touch high, 
We saw that 25.99, a couple in the 23s. And overall, 23.16, little high, but gosh, again, <laughs> they found the fairway. They found the fairway. Peak heights, the next thing I wanna look at here, that's gonna be 22 with the Epic, 26, so much higher there with the Sim 2, 24 in between there with the Rogue, 26 again with the TSR3, always thought that was a high penetrating driver. The Gen 6, a little lower, 23, and the Ping 10K again, 25. Now, if we look at the standard deviation numbers here, that gives us another clue into the consistency of these drivers. The Epic, 23 was the standard deviation. That's very high. Again, that has to do with how wide of a circle you draw around those five shots. 15.5, much tighter there with the, with, with the Sim 2. And again, if you remember, the distance was all very, very similar. Rogue ST, 16.5, so the Sim 2 actually beat it there in terms of standard deviation at least. The TSR3 a little wider, still at 19. 15.4 with the PXG, which is a good number, but 9.6 with the ping. And that's what I'm talking about. You're just, the consistency is unmatched. Now carry numbers, 229 with the Epic, rolling out to 255. 236, that was a big step up. Just like I saw when I bought that driver, that was seven yards in terms of carry five yards if you talk about rollout. That was a big improvement from the Epic to the Sim 2. We step back a little bit with the Rogue there at 231, but when you get to rollout, only three yards difference there at 257. The TSR3, we're up to 235 again, just under the Sim 2 actually. And because of all that spin, it only rolled out to 258. But if you get some fast and firm conditions, that driver goes a real long way with that carry number. 232 with the Gen 6, but the difference there again is it's a little bit tighter in terms of dispersion. That's what I saw when I took this challenge with PXG. The distance was the same. In fact, the TSR beat it out here, but the dispersion a little bit tighter there with the Gen 6. Doesn't get any tighter though than the Ping 10K like we said. 230 though, we lost a little bit of distance. Roll that to 253, but again, gonna find more fairways with the Ping 10K. So what do you think? Have drivers gotten better over the years? I think we can easily say in terms of distance, from the Epic to the Sim 2, there was a big leap there. But since that Sim 2, maybe over the last three, four years, distance numbers are not really measurably improving. But forgiveness and dispersion numbers are. And again, I think it's gotten the best it's ever been here with this entire crop of 2024 drivers, including my Ping 10K, the QI 10, things like the AI Smoke, Cobra Dark Speed, really the entire crop of 2024 drivers, I think has really gotten us better consistency in terms of ball speed, as well as dispersion. Really fascinating. I'd love to know what insights you've gleaned. Let me know down there in the comments. You probably caught things that I didn't even catch. I know people really analyze these stats. So I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And if you want another video to watch, this is how I ranked the drivers in five categories this year. The key categories that I look at as well as an overall winner. So check that one out. I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.